we can learn to train up and rely on the most comprehensive kind of intelligence that a human has access to. Now this intelligence is very simple to identify but it's very important that we do identify it for ourselves. Now just by stopping thinking, just for a moment, you allow yourself a space to identify the alertness, the cognizance and the power to know that is the basis of your experience right here and right now. So you won't have more open intelligence in five minutes time. Nobody's going to give it to you and nobody can take it away. It's the basis of your experience right here and right now. The power to know. Now in the Balanced View training what is provided is a really simple and comprehensive educational package that will allow you to train up in relying on this comprehensive intelligence. Now this intelligence is so comprehensive that it contains all knowledge, all information, all data. Everything is known by exactly the same intelligence. So that means practically that it contains all conventional knowledge. Everything is included. It includes rational thought. It includes analytical thought. It includes intellectual ideas and concepts but is not limited by any of them. It is the space that includes all ideas, all questions and all solutions. This is the nature of your mind. Like a clear cloudless sky, we can't find an edge or a limit to this. Your mind is continually pouring forth this seamless flow of benefit. And when you allow this flow of data, this flow of experience, just to be as it is, then its beneficial nature is effortlessly revealed. And your capacity to express that beneficial nature in your mind, your speech, your body, your qualities and your activities is what is trained up. So with something like anger or even hatred, this is such a powerful experience. You know when somebody really makes you angry or there's somebody that's done something either to you personally or to the world that you feel really angry about. You know, what they've done is, is just so wrong, it's outrageous. And all you can see is that anger. What that means is, is that relationship that you have with that person is completely coloured by that feeling of anger. There's nothing that you can find to be of gratitude for there. There's nothing that you can appreciate there. All you're doing is caught up in this story of anger and hatred. Now with the simple instruction of taking short moments of allowing the data just to be exactly as they are and then applying this to ourselves in our lives with our particular set of data this is where this incredible insight as to the beneficial nature of all experience is revealed to us directly and instinctively. So when the anger is allowed to be as it is we begin to see the actual nature of the anger when we're emphasizing and focusing in on all of the descriptions about that experience then all we see is the anger without recognizing its source as open intelligence it, it as being inseparable from open intelligence there's no way that we would experience or know the anger or anything about it without this power to know without this intelligence that is completely wide open and clear inclusive of the anger and everything about it but that has to be instinctively and directly recognized. And this is where the practice of short moments is absolutely key. A short moment of just allowing the anger to be there without doing anything about it, without indulging it, without spinning off into these worlds of descriptions about it, justifying it, telling yourself how, how justified you are in feeling this anger because they did this, that and the other. Instead, when we allow the anger to be exactly as it is, there's incredible power there, incredible energy. You know that feeling of anger. It completely overwhelms and consumes you when you emphasize it and indulge it. Or you try and push it away. Try and bottle it up. Try and not show anyone how angry, angry you are. 
that, that, that pain that you feel inside, that, that sense of frustration, that, that deep sense of there being something so wrong with that. Instead, in a short moment of allowing the anger to be there, there's incredible discernment and insight to be found within that particular data stream. Because instead of being a victim to it, we actually have the discernment to see what information is useful in that anger. This is where we become mature human beings. This is where we tap into that incomprehensive intelligence. No longer being ruled by the anger, but utilizing this power of the anger to take very clear and direct action if that is what is called for. So if all I see is the anger, if all I'm doing is emphasizing that, then I'm a complete victim to it. And any action I take based on that emotion will simply reflect that, that victimhood. I'll be looking for somebody to blame for my anger, something to blame. And this is the same mechanism that has been playing out in human society for thousands of years. And we can see the result of that around us in our society. We see the result of that in our own personal lives. And anger is just one example of that. There are lots of other examples, jealousy, um, sadness, um, loneliness. All, all of these different data streams that we emphasize and get caught up in and then relate and act out based on those ideas as having this independent nature and power over us. Now when anger is left to be exactly as it is, without giving it the power that it does not have, then we become empowered by the anger. And if something needs to be done about a situation, then we have the power and the energy to act in, in, in such an incredible way. Because that energy that formerly we were a victim to suddenly becomes ours to utilize for the benefit of all. We're no longer fooled by all of the descriptions around something like anger. And what I began to see was that this same mechanism that I have been playing out in my life, either indulging, avoiding or replacing my data streams and then relating from there, was exactly the same mechanism that was playing out for every other person on the planet. So by seeing this in myself, this gave me great insight and great compassion, first of all towards myself, because I had been doing the best. I'd been doing my best with what I knew. You know, always doing my best, always wanting the best for myself and other people, and yet feeling frustrated that that wasn't the outcome that I saw in my life. You know, I, I wanted to be happy, I wanted to be satisfied, I wanted to enjoy my life, I wanted to help other people, I wanted to enjoy the company of other people, and yet it, it always felt like, even though I was doing my best, this was never the result, this was never the outcome. And so having this insight and this understanding as to this basic mechanism within myself, either I'm emphasizing the data or I'm relying on open intelligence. And this incredible capacity to find the solution in each moment, including rational thought and intellectual analysis, that's of course included within the most comprehensive intelligence. And then I began to understand, well hold on, if I've been doing my best with what I knew, and this is the way that I've been living my life. These ideas and concepts that I've learned have been the ones that I've been using to guide me in my actions. And this applies to everybody else. No matter what they've done, no matter how terrible the things that people might have done or how, how much anger and hatred this brings up in me, they were also a human being just like me that was also doing the best with what they knew. This is the, the, the start of real compassion and understanding. But it doesn't mean that we then go along with what other people do and say because we have this understanding. Instead, that allows us the insight to meet people and to talk to people with an understanding where we can actually make our words and our actions count. Instead of being caught up with something like anger where there is no meeting, there's no openness when you're consumed with anger. There's no ability to find a solution. And yet when we empower the anger with this magic of open intelligence, really opening out our intelligence to include everything about the situation, 
then we see everything more and more clearly. Everything about ourselves, everything about other people, everything about the situation that we have in the world at the moment. And we see solutions that are impossible to see when all we're focused in on is the descriptions. Now, when you do the 12 empowerments, you are given an incredible opportunity to really practically apply this creative capacity in your everyday lived relationships. All of us are so creative. You know, look at yourself, look at all the ideas that are just popping into your head, all of the different thoughts and emotions, all of the experiences that you've had in your life. It's an incredible flow of creativity. Now, when we harness that capacity to be creative and we utilize it for the benefit of all, then it's incredible the solutions that we can come up with just by tapping into open intelligence and relying on the rest of the support mechanism of the four mainstays. Now, we really ramp up our intelligence. Who doesn't want to be smarter? Who doesn't want to be more intelligent? Who doesn't want to see solutions where all they saw previously were problems? <coughs> Who doesn't want to live a happy life? Who wants to remain miserable and caught up and consumed by all of these difficult emotions and thoughts? <coughs> and so what you're given here is this really in, in simple instruction set of the four mainstays that will support you in your everyday live reality and empower that so that it is, it is lived for the benefit of all. This obsessive self-focus, which is actually what the focus on these data streams is, just naturally softens and relaxes, softens and relaxes. The mind opens out to encompass everybody and everything, recognizing how we are already and have always been so intimately connected with everything and everyone. It was just the focus on the descriptions that meant that this went unnoticed. So now we're retraining our mind. We're emphasizing open intelligence. We're studying texts that instinctively evoke this recognition within us. We're spending time with other people who are also deeply committed to living a Four Mainstays lifestyle. Because this is a lifestyle. This is not some abstract philosophical concept where we can sit around and talk about it for a while and then go home and live our angry, violent, depressed, miserable, lonely lives. That's not what is going on here. If that's what you want to do, then that's fine, that's up to you, but that's not what happens here. Here we empower each other by our own example of living a life of complete open-heartedness and love coupled with this powerful discernment to see how we can express this love in a way that will be of benefit to all. Not a self-centered idea of what love is, but this expansive idea. Opening up all concepts into their beneficial nature, recognizing the beneficial potency that's present in every single moment. This is what you're offered here. This is what the Four Mainstays lifestyle provides. It's such a powerful way to live life. You give up the right to be a victim. You tap into your creative potential. This innate capacity that each of us has to know the nature of our mind, to know the nature of reality. So just keep turning up. You know, when I turned up here for the first time, it, it was like these words and phrases were just flying over my head. And every now and again, I'd sort of catch one and managed to hold on to that for a short while and then forget that almost immediately as well. But what I heard was so powerful and spoke to me so directly, these lightning bolts of recognition, that I kept coming back. And I'm so glad that I did. I'm so glad that I kept listening to the talks. Because this capacity that I recognized first of all in other people, in the trainers, was very gently and organically also recognized to be my capacity too. There was no end to how far I could train this up within myself. So it's up to you, how far do you want to take this? Now, really, what kind of life do you want to live? This is what's being offered here. And it took me a while as well to recognize the um, full profundity of what was, what was going on here. 
This was not just another group of people sitting around and talking about the nature of mind. This was a group of people that were living this as a reality. And when you come to one of the centres, either in Goa or Sweden, well, there's a big event we have coming up in Bristol. To be around other people and to see the way that they work together, they live together, they cook together, they put on these huge events and run centres together in complete harmony, joy and fun. Everyone empowering themselves and empowering each other. It is possible for us to live like this as human beings. It's not a utopia or a, a pipe dream. We each have this opportunity. You know, really take this opportunity. I mean, I'm... This is my last um, open meeting. I'm going back to England tomorrow and I, I just want to say how grateful I am to all of you here and to everybody that's made these months in India so incredible and so powerful. Everybody contributing, all of us working together. It's so inspiring and um, yeah, I really, words fail me. I, I just, just um, the gratitude and appreciation that I feel and, and the love that I feel for everybody is just amazing. To see my life has turned around so dramatically from being a very narrow perspective that was all about me and my thoughts and my ideas and my experience to one that is just more and more open, more and more enjoyable, more and more easeful. And um, it's not just me that's having that experience, there's thousands of people all around the world. So this is the quiet revolution. Each one of us taking this opportunity, making this choice. Are we going to be a victim to our, our data streams or are we going to take complete responsibility for our lives and empower them for the benefit of all?